So the initial part of the design is to basically outline the margin. You can do it in two ways. You can just simply choose the margin line automatic and it will find your margin line. Um, I find it sometimes kind of goes wonky or you could go the other way and you could just do your manual one and then you just basically click and go on the, the prep a little bit and just kind of have it join the dots. And you're just essentially just following the margin line. Um, what I often do, actually most often, is just actually flip it upside down because that's when you can really see what the margin is and what the tooth is uh, really, really well. So I do prefer this mode, especially in a challenging area. You can really kind of flip it around and see where the margin goes. And especially if you're going subgingival or challenging margin, things like that, that's when I'll really flip it around and um, Take a look. I mean, you could spend, you know, seconds or a significant amount of time doing this. Uh, so, depends on really how much precision, how quick you are. But this is the one part that you definitely want to spend some time on and make sure that everything flows. And the other thing that I, I really like to do often is just switch over right here to the to color, the clinical color, the color mode, and that way you can just really see um, whether or not you've got the margin, uh, where the tissue is sometimes variations like that. Here we go next. Uh, the insertion direction I usually just follow what the computer gives me, uh, what the software gives me. But sometimes I'll change it with onlays and inlays. It's more often that I'll change it. Uh, I don't like the insertion direction with onlays and inlays, and I'll show you that in a different video. Uh, but in general, for crowns, I tend to just go with the automatic. So this is the initial design that the computer gives us, software gives us. Uh, I will sometimes sort of follow the validations. Oftentimes I'll just close it right away. The main, there's a couple of main things. You really want the contacts to be nice and tight so there's no food impaction. So that's the first thing I'll sort of go for. So I'll go right into the contacts. And the default is minus 0.02. I'll automatically lower it to minus 0.15. I just find that's sort of my, my uh, magic number that I really get accurate contacts on and what I'll do is well, I'll put it in a weird place so we'll bring it right over here and then erase where it put it which was super weird and add it and make it a little bit thicker and always hit play to get it to go just gonna close the validations and then again the other contact you just want to make sure that it's in the right spot and I will also thicken it up a bit. So here we go. Very nice initial uh, design. I'll show you something in a minute that I like to do a lot. But I just want to click on the articulator function. I'm going to add the lower teeth. Click on the articulator function and just so you know, this is where you can see the chewing cycle, the contact, and then you can see where the teeth are contacting prematurely. I'm going to remove the articulator function here right now and just zoom in on those teeth. You can see there's quite a bit of uh, interferences that I don't really want, especially on um, the crown in working and lateral movements. So you can either delete it yourself by adjusting it through the wax knife, or what I often do is I actually just adapt the design to to that, and the and the software will take care of it for me. It appears that uh, this is getting really thin now, so I can potentially add a little bit here. I'll add a little bit of size, less strength. And I'll just kind of lump it up. And the other thing at this point that you want to do is turn on 
going to get rid of the articulator and I'm going to turn on the thickness indicator so that I can see where the crown is actually touching the opposing dentition and where it isn't. And sometimes I'll actually put in more grooves to help the patient chew. So I find like sometimes some of the designs are very like very flat. So I will add a couple of grooves here and there just to give it a little bit more thick, uh, ability to chew. And then kind of smooth everything out a little bit to bring it down. And aesthetically, it looks kind of lumpy here, so again, I'm just going to smooth it out. Tuck it in a bit. Let's see what we've got for Steve. Smooth this part out. I'd actually even add a bit here. Also look at it from the side. Smooth this out part a bit. Make it more in line like with the other shoes. And yeah, you can spend lots of time, no time here. It's sort of up to you at this point. Bring this bit a bit more in. do a lot of the times so they'll actually eliminate all the teeth and just first we want to reconnect to the margin line every now and then and then sometimes I just will add a little thickness to this area here where the gum where it meets the tissue so again preventing any kind of food impaction There you go. So, crown is done. We can validate, accept whatever you want to accept, and then send it to the note.